Hey everyone, it's Sean here and I'm back with a special edition late night sneaker review. So in tonight's video, I'm going to be reviewing the latest sneaker coming out from Adidas Originals and that is the Adidas and Nike Runner in the red and white colorway. At this very moment, these sneakers are probably being released in Europe as of right now. Here in Canada, these are set to release today on March 1st. They're going to be available on adidas.ca as well as at a few boutiques located across the country such as Soul Stop, Influence U, and Capsule which just did a midnight eastern time release. So first off, let's take a look at the box. So these shoes come in your standard Adidas Originals blue cardboard box. The one change to this box is that it does have the boost lettering in these big shiny letters on the side of the box and it's in that same format that the yellow and purple boost boxes have as well. So now let's take a closer look at the shoe. Here in Canada we're going to be releasing this red color as well as the navy blue color. And for me I had the choice between the two and I felt that the navy was still a very very nice color. I just ultimately felt that it was a little bit conservative and I preferred the visual pop that this red colorway provided. So overall from a high level basically this is a 1970s sneaker silhouette that's modernized and updated with modern day technology. And what people online have been calling it is an Adidas Gazelle and NMD love child. The overall silhouette of this shoe is quite angular. So we have the sharp lines on the back, we have the slope going all the way down to the toe box, and overall I'd say it's a very handsome looking silhouette. According to Adidas, the majority of this upper is made up of the stretch mesh material. And this can be found on the back, along the midfoot, and the toe box. Other sites have called it canvas, but to me, what it really feels like is like neoprene. The mesh material that Adidas used is actually very thin, very flexible, and very lightweight. So as I pull and tug at this material, you can see how easily it just kind of folds onto itself. This mesh material is overlaid by accents of suede. So you can find the suede material covering the toe cap, up and along the eyelets as well as along the back heel. Speaking of the heel, on the very top of the back we have this white accent leather with the Adidas logo in black. On the midfoot of both the lateral and the medial side we have the Adidas three stripes done in this white zigzag serrated pattern that's fused onto the mesh. On the lateral side there's also this Aniki branding done in gold and this gives it a very retro looking vibe and the concept of printing the name of the sneaker next to the three stripes is a direct nod to the Adidas sneakers of that era such as the Gazelle, the Samba, where they had that same similar style of naming convention on their shoes. The tongue of this shoe is done in this red mesh material that is a bit shinier when you compare it to the mesh that's used on the rest of the shoe. On the top of the tongue we have this red and gold Adidas label that's fused onto the top. The laces on these shoes are a flat red lace that have these copper colored metallic lace tips. Although it looks like this shoe comes with a detached tongue, the tongue of the shoe is actually one piece and connected to the remainder of the shoe, giving this a nice sock-like fit. One thing to note though is these shoes don't come with a removable insole. So if you take a closer look, you can see there's this white insole with this black Adidas branding on the heel and it's apparently sewed in directly into the midsole. According to Adidas' website, this is an ortholite insole, but it's kind of hard to see how thick or how padded the insole is without being able to remove it from the shoe. Of course, these Anikis sit atop this full-length boost midsole in white, and it's finished off with this gum-colored rubber outsole with the Adidas branding located on the bottom heel. So now let's talk about the part that all of you want to know, sizing. So for me, I went with my true size, which is a 10 and a half. For reference sake, I wear a size 10 for shoes such as my PrimeNet NMD R1s, my Yeezy Boost 350 V1s, and my Ultra Boost 3.0s. I wear a 10 and a half in these. I wear a 10 and a half also in my NMD R2, my Yeezy Boost 350 V2s, as well as my Ultra Boost V1 and V2. If you guys aren't familiar with Adidas shoes, I wear the same size in these as I would in my Roshis, my Air Max 1, Air Max 90, and Flyknit Racers. For you big footers out there, this mesh used on this shoe is quite stretchy. And for me personally, I didn't feel any pinching and I didn't feel like it was constricting the width of my foot at all. From a comfort standpoint, I'd say that these are comfortable, but I wouldn't say that they're anything revolutionary or mind blowing. Based on my personal preference, I'd still say that the Ultra Boost are more comfortable than these, but these ones do come ahead of the NMDs. So 
now let me show you guys how these Aniki runners look laced up and on feet. For me, I really like the look of this shoe, especially how it looks like they took a shoe from the 70s, brought it to the modern day, throwed on the latest technology, changed up the silhouette to make it look more aggressive, and overall it's just a clear winner in my eyes. So that wraps up my review of the Adidas Aniki Runner in the red and white colorway. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this new silhouette from Adidas. Is this something that you can pull off or do you think that it looks almost too retro for your personal taste? As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, give me a thumbs up, and definitely give me a follow on Instagram at SGO8. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys were able to get your pair, and I'll see you next time in my next video.